O Lord our God, we are here, journeying into Lent, and here is a dove. And we have recalled the journey of Jesus through birth. And we have recalled the journeying of Jesus to the temple. And now we recall the journey of Jesus through baptism. And here is a dove, a sign of your spirit. O Spirit of God, we are here, journey with us. As Jesus journeyed through the water, and as the Spirit descended, your voice from heaven said, This is my dear Son, with whom I am well pleased. O Spirit of God, we are here, journey with us. We add a dove to our Lenten cross. We join in singing.
This lesson is written in Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. Establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I shall establish between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for drawing us together to be your people. Help us as we meet together, yet apart, to see ourselves as you see us. Give us faith to hear your words of love beyond some of the hard realities of our lives. May your Holy Spirit guide and inspire us to recognise your presence in all we do. Loving, faithful God, your love is absolute, your promises irrevocable. We look up after a shower of rain, marvelling at the colourful beauty of your rainbow. A reminder of your promise and faithfulness to all generations. Wherever we happen to be, wilderness, mountain or valley bottom, at home, at work, indoors, outdoors, your Holy Spirit is with us. We adore you, loving, faithful God. And we thank you, faithful Lord, for your patience, your provision, your power, for your tenderness, trust and triumph, for your security and strength, your compassion and wisdom. We thank you, Lord, that through your grace and mercy, the blessings of faith and your covenant love, you equip, teach and guide us as we traverse today's world, ever mindful of your steadfast love. And for our prayers of confession, I invite you to join me. When I say, Lord Most High, I invite you to respond with, Forgive us, we pray. So we pray, beloved Lord Jesus, you stepped from water to wilderness, from God's voice to the taunting voice of the enemy. In the wilderness of today's world, we face many enemies, many temptations. Forgive us for succumbing to selfishness, greed, lust, anger, power. Lord Most High, forgive us, we pray. Sometimes difficult times follow fast on the heels of one another and it's hard to keep our focus on you. Forgive us 
and help us not to wallow in selfish self-centeredness but to remember your promises and recognize you in those you bring alongside lord most high forgive us we pray forgive us when our minds fail to focus on you and your word Help us to remember that no matter what we're going through, you've been there before us. Whether we're swimming in the warm waters of your love or journeying through the arid wilderness, help us not to lose sight of your hand, guiding us to eternal glory at rainbow's end. Lord, most high, forgive us, we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you went from water to wilderness to suffering on the cross. There, you, beloved Son of God, died in your physical body for our sins. Through your blood we are washed clean of all our guilt and we are able to enter the presence of God with whom you now sit, having been raised in the Spirit. All angels, power and authority submit to you. Because of you, we are forgiven. Praise be to Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. This lesson is written in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. The Baptism of Jesus In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Temptation of Jesus And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. The Beginning of the Galilean Ministry Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Amen. Thanks be to God. A university professor offered a very popular course titled simply The Gospels. 
After studying Mark and John's Gospels, students began the one assignments that the class required. An original Gospel of 30 to 50 pages, based on the readings and discussion of the seminar. As you might imagine, students panicked. How can we possibly write an original Gospel? What must be included and what must be left out? How do you convey the, the deep meaning of the life of Jesus in your own words? Where do you begin? This daunting, overwhelming challenge was precisely what faced Mark as he sat down with pen and parchment to record the story of the life of Jesus. He began without precedent or guide, simply convinced that the story must be told. And tell it he does, in dramatic and rapidly unfolding fashion. Mark has no time for a, a lengthy introduction that eases listeners into the narrative. No space for the story of the miraculous birth in Bethlehem, or a detailed survey of Jesus' family tree. Instead, readers are cast into the wilderness, where John the Baptist appears, preaching repentance, change and forgiveness of sins. No sooner does John predict the coming of the Messiah than Jesus arrives on the scene. All of Advent in eight frantic verses. Mark proceeds at an almost breathless pace, barely pausing to describe characters or settings. So focused is he on the plot itself, so compelled to tell the story, the gospel story in his own words. Anticipation is high when Jesus arrives at the Jordan River, where John has been preaching and baptising. The dramatic climax of the scene is the baptism of Jesus, complete with descending dove and a voice from heaven that declares his divinity. The scene was apparently set the scene would apparently set the stage for a mega ministry with vast popular appeal and a steadily growing impact over the state of affairs in Galilee and even in Rome, at the very centre of the world. After all, Jesus' baptism takes away any doubt that he is the Son of God. From this moment his power should be unquestioned. Justice should roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This moment of divine recognition should cause Caesar to hand over his crown, or cower in fear. This wilderness baptism is the perfect beginning to a world-changing story. But this is what can be so frustrating about Mark's Gospel. Jesus' life and his ministry are not marked by immediate success or recognition of divine authority. Instead, the same Spirit who descended at his baptism drives Jesus further out into the wilderness, where he will spend forty days tempted by Satan surrounded only by wild beasts and angels. No multitudes, no fan club. The ministry of Jesus, like the Gospel of Mark, begins in the wilderness. When Noah was in his ark riding the waves of the flood, he didn't know what the future held for him and his family and all those animals that he had collected together. Eventually, his time of testing came to an end and God entered into a covenant with man. He gave us the rainbow as the symbol of hope and certainty that God is with us. And so we come this Sunday, at the beginning of Lent, 
in the Christian year to commence this sacred season of reflection and repentance, of spiritual discipline and renewal in the wilderness. It is the place where pretense fades away and honest vulnerability becomes possible. In the wilderness, we are unable to keep up the public image of effortless perfection that plagues us. We are freed to confess the messy reality of our lives. We are tempted to forget the promises of God. We are threatened by the dangers of the unknown. And all the while, we are watched and waited on by the divine. The wilderness, like it or not, is where we live our lives. It is the place between certainty and uncertainty, between hope and fear, between promises made and promises kept. In the wilderness, Jesus finds his voice and his vocation, and when he emerges 40 days later, his words echo those of the Baptist. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent, believe. Mark is the only gospel writer who gives his book a title. In the first verse of the first chapter, Mark declares that this story is the beginning of the good news. It's such a hopeful title especially in our time when so many people pray daily that there's more good news to come somehow, some way. If Mark's story and Jesus' life are just the beginning of the gospel, then we have reason to believe in more that's, that still surrounds us. If this is only the beginning, we can strain our eyes and stand on tiptoe as we look for more good news that is sure to follow. Jesus' life was full of adversity and suffering and defeat. He didn't replace all unjust earthly rulers or lift all the lowly and oppressed. Sometimes the 2,000 years that have passed since seem to have brought little change. We read of needless deaths, unending violence, innocent suffering, justice denied. All around us are those who lack the basic necessities of life, who go hungry or live in fear, who, who grie whose grieving is unceasing, whose isolation is unbearable. We, at the present time, face the horrors of the pandemic, the pain, the suffering, and the loss of loved ones. In the wilderness of our lives, we are hurt, and we hurt one another. We break promises, accept lies that are truth, and fail to love our neighbours. The kingdom has not yet arrived in its fullness, we can be sure of that. No, we seem to be stuck year after year, sacred season upon sacred season, at the beginning of the gospel. This means that the moment of God's breakthrough in Jesus Christ hasn't begun. It's not yet entirely visible. It's only just begun. Still, even out here in the wilderness, there are times when God's presence is unmistakable. Moments when the extraordinary breaks through the thin veneer of the ordinary and blinds us with its brilliance when angels outnumber wild beasts. Those moments come when we face the fear of the wilderness 
and gather the courage and the strength to take the next step. Moments when the kingdom comes nearer. As we set out on this Lenten journey, remember the truth of your baptism. You are claimed. You are chosen as God's beloved. You are empowered to set out in search of your voice and your vocation. The work is not easy in this wilderness called life. But the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is this. In him the time has been fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Our human hearts have been invaded by the presence of the divine. And nothing will ever be the same. And that is where we begin. O oh God of new beginnings, walk with us in this wilderness journey, that we might reach the joy of your resurrection with changed hearts and renewed minds. Amen.
Josh, and we're called Libra. Welcome to our concert. We all live in South London, in England, near famous towns like Streatham and Croydon. Some of us live quite near to Wimbledon, not far from Chelsea, and even closer to the amazing Crystal Palace, which is the name of our local football team. Our next song is called Going Home, which has a melody you might recognise. Me, Ben and Tom will be singing the solo parts. And our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. As we walk into the long weeks of Lent, we begin a journey into the wilderness. We ask, may your spirit, Lord, rest upon us. We travel from suffering to hope. May your spirit rest upon us. We travel through death to new life. May your spirit rest upon us. And as we look to the example of Jesus, who in the wilderness chose the difficult path, help us to know that you are with us. Though the way ahead may be hard and we so often falter and fail, strengthen us for the journey ahead and teach us to trust in you. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. 
teach us to walk in it. We walk in relative security, thankful for the comforts we know. We pray for people who cannot afford to work from home and ask that we would address the inequality this shows us. We pray for people in homes that are un- insecure and for people living in life-threatening icy weather in countries around the world. We give thanks for the peace we experience and ask that our church communities can offer hope and safety for those in distress. May we share what we have and work to lift the burden that others carry as we look to the example of Jesus who embraced all who were in pain. May we reach out to others in generosity and kindness. We walk in our troubled world full of anxiety at the conflict we see in Iraq, in Iran, in Myanmar, Somalia and in Yemen. Bring your peace, we pray. We're aware of the finite resources of our earth and we pray that we may limit our destructive habits as we look to the example of Jesus who lived in simplicity and trust and as we are asked again to follow him, May we free ourselves from all that holds us back and trust in your promise that you will never leave us. We walk in separation apart from friends and those we love. Give us strength to endure in hope. We pray especially for all who are burdened by loneliness for all who are in pain, for the bereaved and the despairing, the sick and the dying. May we work to make our communities places of warmth and friendship where all are included and each one finds a place. As we look to the example of Jesus who welcomed the least and the lost and brought the overlooked into the light. So may we extend our circle of belonging and believe that you, your love, is big enough for all to enter in. We walk in hope for a future as the rollout of the vaccine continues across the UK and there are signs of success in the data as death rates fall. We give thanks for the work of the NHS as they administer vaccines to the public and manage long lists of people needing urgent surgery. And at the same time, may we be mindful of countries yet to begin vaccination and countries who can't afford the vaccines. And we ask that governments would enable fair distribution. When we begin to emerge from crisis, may we work to build a better world where the poorest are protected as we look again to the example of Jesus, who placed such great value on children. And we ask that we may create a space where young can dream again and all can grow and rest and be secure. In love you made us. In love you call us. In love you lead us. Through this world, through sorrow and joy, until we see you face to face. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. Amen. And let's say together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Like a river at 
in death my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot you have taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul though satan should buffet though trial should come Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well. with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul and lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul Go, beloved friends, to find your wilderness place amidst the chaos of life. Find God present there, revealing the purpose of your life, and in loving service, know the blessing of God today and always. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord show his favour to you and give you peace. Amen.